Yay. <clears throat> Finally. But we're back. And better than ever. <laughs> and better than ever. Well, we're not sick anymore, so we're better. <laughs> um, so, I mean, first things first, it is order week. Um, you can order olive and natural now as well. Those colors are back. We've got the... Yeah, we were waiting on edge paint yes. um, to come to... Oh, crap. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it finally showed up. It sure did. And it looks great. It does. And we're really happy And about we're it. changing all of our edge paint to this company, and we're excited. Yes. Um, it is exciting. It's exciting to be able to just get exactly what we need. <laughs> it's the time of year everybody gets the crud. <laughs> <laughs> is that the sickness? The sickness. <clears throat> well, luckily, knock on all the wood, Wes did not get it. Yeah. So I am over the moon about That's, that. That was like, the best part. Yeah, I agree. Like, get I can be sick any day. Don't let him get sick because that's the worst. Yeah, he's not a happy sick kid. No one, yeah, no one's happy if Wes is sick. <laughs> but like, for real. So <clears throat> that was, I am just yeah, just very grateful that he did not get sick, um, and that we're all feeling relatively back to normal. Um, Navy is out of stock because we're waiting on the right thickness to come in so that's not available for this order week mm. if you're looking for it we're hoping it'll be back for november um but if for some reason it's not we'll definitely let you know uh, that would be super unfortunate sure would be yeah you guys love navy as do we so oh. um what was i gonna say so we've been okay so yeah it's order week um today's thursday right Still so true. they have till Sunday. Yeah, three, three-ish days. To place any orders for the month of October. Yeah. And then otherwise, your last chance is going to be November, the first week of November, your next chance. Right. Um, and then the Chloe and Mini Chloe will be back for November. For that, yeah. Because we're getting a lot of questions about that too. Um, <clears throat> And then the holiday deadline is the 5th of November, which is a shortened order week yes. situation. And then we have to decide if we're going to open for December, if we're going to... Right. And we were just talking about that. I think um, we probably will, but those orders, we might not start making until January. So you basically like first in line to get anything for January. Um, but yeah, November 5th is going to be your holiday deadline. So if you're looking to get a bag for someone or for yourself um, and, and you want it in time for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate, November 5th is going to be... Daniel missed our live last week. He cried. Oh. He didn't say that, but I'm just going to make assumptions. <laughs> that he cried? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, that'll be your, your chance to get anything in for the holidays. Um, Which is crazy. Which is crazy. By the way. It is. Because like, I feel like October took forever to kind of get here and then now it's here and then. I feel like it's already almost gone. Well, Even though November is like a long month and I love November, or October, I mean. I love October. I still. The same size. I, I, I need it to like stick around for like three extra weeks. If October could be three we extra weeks longer, that'd be great. Yeah, that would definitely work. <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be good? Just like extend it. Never mind, whatever. Extend October. It's the best month of the year. September, October. I probably cried that day, but not specifically because of the live. <laughs> no, okay. Oh. Uh, we ordered dyes for the chloe which is a, and mini chloe which yes. is exciting and we i also did got those custom on makeup. the day i got sick yeah. and i was like at the computer like i must get these done and then i can get to, in bed yeah. <laughs> and then i got custom a custom box for the big chloe because it doesn't fit any of our other boxes <laughs> whatever and i think i came up with a solution like our big shelby has yeah. been a challenge too for boxes because it's so deep um the company that we get boxes from won't even. They're just like, no, it doesn't. No. We, 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 they doesn't will work. not make they that box it. for us. 
And I mean, I get it. It's based on the integrity of the cardboard. type of cardboard they use. So their so. cardboard's really thick. I don't know. I think it'd be fine. So I got a, a blank 12 by 12 by 12 box, and I'm going to make it smaller, which is what I did. Oh. And it worked. Oh, you made it smaller? Mm -hmm. So can you order I that cut, then, like, four or inch, no? No. Because these, these blanks are just like whatever standard sizes. Oh, I see. Um, I see. And you're just cutting it which down. Which is fine. Yeah, but you didn't really I mean, want to have to cut it down. It's a good size box for like and other I stuff if we need it. But like a haunted house? I guess so. If Wes wants to be a haunted house. Do you do Halloween? private label? We, do, we don't. No, we don't. We don't. I know it's hard to find people that will do that. Um. Yeah, so we're not optimized for that at all. So we're optimized for making our designs and producing them in small batches. Yeah. So there's people out there that are optimized for that kind of work. Oh, we just are not. Um, so our goal is to get all of our orders down to zero for November, yeah. by November 1st. And then we can really have the runway we need for the holidays. For the holidays, yeah, I so agree. That's a goal. It is a goal. That is a goal. It is, it is a goal. <laughs> that is Can we do this? words you said. <laughs> <laughs> can we do it? It's possible. I think we can do it. I think so, too. I feel mostly confident. I need to get all these Lunas done, though. They're, like, laughing it, at me over there. I know. It depends on the, like, how the batch the styles go, and think. how many. Because there's a couple quick bags, and if we can get them in there, hmm. like, they get interspersed, it kind of makes things move along faster. Yeah, it does. Anyway. Um, what else we got? I've just been thinking about spring and summer next year. I'm going to try not to. You're going to try not to? All right. Well, you're not going to like this part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we have it mostly figured out. Yeah, I, I think the, I think the question is, is are we going to add a color or a design, like mm. a new color, a new design for spring? Because we're gonna we're gonna be adding like a soft like the milled yeah it's a lot as part of what we're as part of our collection or part of a new type of collection but is that gonna be is it gonna be too much to add a design as well yeah yeah and I don't I don't really want to do like a summer drop for like something yeah. something else yeah yeah I know what you mean. Yeah, the mild is going to be a lot because I have to kind of go through each design that we've decided to do in mild and make it because they will require slightly different uh, construction. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we decided, I think we're going to go with six designs. We'll be part of the mini collection for that. Part of the mild collection. Mild, yeah. Um, so... We're not gonna, not every design will make it to that, or will it won't make sense yeah. if everything's like that. Like the Stella, for example, would, would be, be way too large and squishy and weird and not ideal. I believe in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> do you do custom or personalized? So we do offer monogramming. Mm -hmm. That's on our site. Um, yep. I'm working on a bag right now that is. Um, so three capital letters, gold foil. Yep. That was personal. Now it's personal. Um, and we can do... Custom strap length. Like a, Yeah, like a custom strap length. So there, our strap is adjustable, but yeah. if you know that um, you need it a little longer or a little shorter for whatever reason, just you can let us know. Or if you have a bag you know you love like the length of. Mm, yeah, yeah. You can do very that. helpful. That's probably the easiest way to do it, just because otherwise you're kind of guessing, right? The other question I kind of had for you. For me? Well, I was thinking, like, are there any designs that you want to tweak, tweak a little bit? Are there any, like, small design tweaks that you've been thinking of? I mean, the only one that we've really talked about is the squishing the, sh the big shell me a little bit. Okay. The oval, but I, I mean, I don't really feel like I have time for that. <laughs> when would I have time to do? That's... So the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I didn't have anything in mind. I'm just asking oh, okay. if you've been, while you're working, you're just like, oh, oh man. Uh, right really now, I'm just trying to get through the stuff we have. There's nothing 
that I'm like, this is so frustrating. Okay. The only thing that's feeling time consuming is um, the Shelby's, mm -hmm. but we did get one more die that should help with a that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm I'm more interested to see like how the Chloe's go, and yeah. what kind of potential. Well, we opted to get dies from the start, so that yeah. should help. Because most sure. of it, yeah, yeah. The only thing is the lid on the one. I need to kind of mm -hmm. wrap that up. Wrap it up. You have time. Time is relative. <laughs> time is not when the time's not real. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not I'm not when, worried about it. Not when the uh, <laughs> holiday deadlines are looming. Yeah. Then it's very real. <laughs> I think I think if <laughs> Why are you giggling? Someone someone's upset and you're just like, yeah, time's relative. Oh yeah, that'll go over well. It's like, yeah, my birthday is relative to the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one thing we're going to try to do this holiday season is just, like, through our post is highlight, like, some other small businesses. Yes. Uh, we, our last post was like that. We just tagged some people that we really appreciate what they do. Um, so, yeah. Yes, you guys can look forward to seeing a lot more of that and hopefully finding some new other cool Look from makers. the Czech Republic. Oh, hope, your co hope coffee is there. Yep, don't worry. Coffee's here. For you. <laughs> Still a little sleepy. It's fine though. It's like a been a weird temperature here. Yeah, like, it's like, I, I want it to it be was cold, like but it's like seriously like muggy and humid and weird. Affecting so. me yesterday. Today's not as bad, yeah. but yesterday I was exhausted. I was yeah. so tired. It was so yeah. It's like it was odd. It's not hot per se it's not like 90 or anything and like it could be way more humid than it is but it's still like an odd temperature for the time of year and you're just like yeah. it shouldn't just like, no, be thank this you. warm <laughs> nah. your order might be late in the universe but there's another universe where your order is early you should just focus on that you should focus on quantum physics and not worry about it <laughs> string theory over here yeah just finished your domestic course. Can't wait oh, to cool. make my first bag. Awesome. Yay. That is so exciting. Thank yeah, you for taking you, it. If you have any questions at all, um, you can hit us up on the forum. I answered something uh, this morning on it. So <clears throat> it should be pretty straightforward. But if you find yourself stuck in any way, that's what we're here. We're here to help. And thank you. That's I'm, I'm excited to see what you make. So is Leanne. Yes. Please show me your bear foot. Well, we don't have any bear's feet here. What? Are you going to pay me a million dollars for that? Because <laughs> maybe for a million dollars. Maybe for a million. You That's the dollar amount, guys. My bear feet. A million. And I just like lift up my leg and it's literally a bear's foot. Yep. I don't like it. Remember those slippers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show a bag. Let's do it. And here is a personalized Some, bag that I'm It working. might be a gift. Oh. And you might have just given away a secret to somebody. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should probably show bags because. What else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? <laughs> just make bags. So here is a bag. And here is a larger version of that bag. <laughs> Mini Barry, Barry, welcome. This is black. This is navy. With a nice blue highlighted contrast edge paint. Slow. I'm gonna get. Oh. We're gonna get these in the mail today, so. Yes, we got a lot. We've been. It's really funny. We used to. Because we used to drive west to school, <laughs> to school yeah. um, we were very regularly at the post office, but now he walks, we walk him to school, so now it's like, oh, we, we have, have to, to get go to the, the post, yeah. we have to like get in the car and go to the post, we literally, our car is like, you never drive me, ever. It's ridiculous. 
Do you have to get a sewing machine specifically to sew leather, or can you just you change the foot of the sewing machine? So you probably would want a machine that is specific for leather or heavy duty enough for leather. Um, yeah. It will mm -hmm. highly depend on what you make and the thickness of leather you want to use. Yeah, and what type of leather you're using. Okay, um, for using, um, I can never remember the word. It's not fabric leather. Like upholstery? Upholstery no. leather? It's very thin, yeah. You could probably sew that on a well, like regular gar machine. Garment leather? Yeah. Um, will be thinner. But you like, could sew that on probably like a light industrial with like a leather needle, but yeah. otherwise making bags and the type of leather that we use, you definitely need a, a machine that's specific for it. Yeah, and you'll, you'll definitely want a different needle than like your standard. But you can also sew by hand. That's And you can do it by hand if you want. Um, so yeah, you might want to start there because that's the cheapest way to do it. Just you just need two needles and some like wax linen thread. Um, you can start with a small project or something. Um, otherwise, you're going to be into an investment machine. Unless you know somebody who has one that you can try it out on or something like that, mm -hmm. which could be helpful. Uh, we have um, a, from leather, uh, yeah, leather Machine Company, the Cobra Class 26. We have two of them. Yeah, you can probably see one over there. What? I so said you can probably see one of them over there. Probably. I love to see artisans like you guys. How many orders per month make the craft still enjoyable for you and profitable? Mm. Um, we, I think the... What was it, 60 something? Yeah, that's like our top. That's the top end that I can create without losing my mind. Um, and I still might lose my mind. Yeah, you would, you would lose your mind. If that was every, yeah. It's interesting because I feel like the variety of designs mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier, believe it or not. Well, as mentally. Far as, mentally, as far <laughs> as like producing. Because um, if you had to make this one design over and over and over again, you might lose it. Yeah. But doing multiples, or what do we have, like 12 or 13 quilt signs, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that definitely helps. Um, and this this one is somebody who can just make all the time and be happy. Yes. For the most part. So like that's just kind of part of who she is. It's true. I zone out and listen to podcasts. It's like her meditation just, state. Yeah, yeah. It's the flow. Yeah. Um, I lose track of time and where I am and... She wakes up and she's like, okay. Oh, I made five bags. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that definitely helps. What are you most excited for in your business over the next couple months? So, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the milled, um, and I want to see how that goes with, uh, with customers. Yes. I, I think that adds like a different dimension to what we do. And it could be fun. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think also I was kind of looking at the future, and I think I probably said this last year, but there's not any real tool we need at this point. So like we shouldn't have to really invest a lot more um, money that way to what we do. And which is exciting because that means we could potentially invest in other parts. Spend money somewhere else. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. And the other thing we did this year, you probably remember, Daniel, is we made an effort to do um, an advertisement one, at least oh, once a yeah. month for each month. So to see how it goes and see what kind of momentum that gives us and if it helps it or if it doesn't help, if it was worth it. So I'll be able to get all that data, how much we spent versus you know what I thought it made us and see if that's worth it. Um, because getting your stuff in front of new, a new audience and new people is obviously important. You want to you wanna kind of keep inspiring people yeah. to be interested in what you do. Can you make some men's wallets and card holders? Uh, we, so we did. We used to. And to be honest with you, they sold at shows, but not online. So we decided to kind of just shift 
and be mostly, I guess, I'm not gonna, I don't know. What would you call it? I mean, it's mostly women, but like, I mean, a man can use anything that we make as well. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have like men specific things. Um, and there's also like a ton of people out there that do like men's wallets. Yeah. So that doesn't really help us differentiate our brand and our business. Um, well, there's some little known parts of the H&H &H journey, oh man. Um, little, little known, known parts. parts, is that what you said? I always kind of forget how crammed everything is. Like this mm -hmm. morning, I was like, I, I couldn't believe we launched Navy this year. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, was that two years ago? I don't know. Um, it just, it all like is so condensed. Um, and it's that really crazy to think about that we even did a lot of things we did, especially with like a newborn. <laughs> yeah. So um, you have to be a little bit crazy to do this. Just a tiny bit. For sure. Little known parts. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. We were in the museum of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I yeah, feel like we, that's were, probably... we were in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. If you can't hear what she's, what Liam's saying which is really cool. Um, hi guys, I purchased a Bowery and received it a week or two ago. Absolutely love it, awesome. I think I love hearing that. Oh yeah, I'm interested to hear how the abs go. Yeah, and then we just took a really like lax approach to it. It's just like, um, we probably talked about this before, but we just did like Leanne making stuff videos to see if people were, would engage with that, be interested in it, um, and maybe follow us. I feel like it's it's tough. Like this this year, I think from Instagram at least, mm. it's changed pretty drastically. Like we used to get like just thousands and thousands of people like following us, and I feel like this year significant significantly slowed down um and i i feel and i don't think that's anything to do with anything we're doing as much as it's just instagram well we changing. were kind of well we were f not first but we were ahead of like the video side of it yeah and it caught up so like it's yeah. just saturated now in a different way that's so very true we have to think about a different type of or a different kind of content we can make or a different type of uh way we can differentiate that way too um it, that's always the game though, right? You do, stump, you do something and it works and you do that until it stops working and then you, hopefully you're figuring out the next thing while that's working. Yeah. Welcome to marketing. That's why marketing is such a big thing because it's always changing. Always changing. And it's always needed. I'm trying to think of like little details that people might be interested in, but I feel like we're boring people. What about us? You feel like we're boring? Thanks a lot. I mean, we're pretty boring. It feels that way. Um, our basement flooded and... My basement definitely flooded. That was great. That sucked. That was my favorite time. Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, IG algorithm is super weird right now, but also it's free, so I try to keep that in mind before getting mad. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. I totally agree. Um, I, I recently realized we haven't really sent... We haven't really, like posted like regular posted you can go back pretty quickly like on our main mm. post and it's like a year done right um, so we've been doing a lot less of that uh, videos I feel like we just used to get more reach um, and like I said things are saturated now people are following more people and I think the way it works now at least from my experience on my personal account is like I'll follow somebody new and then all of a sudden I'll get blasted with all their stuff and like that's not really what I'm looking for, Instagram. If you're listening, um, <laughs> like intersperse that, sure. But like to have them be like the primary focus of my feed for a while is kind of weird. So I almost wonder if it's kind of spamming people a little bit too much, and it's like then I'm like, well, I'm gonna unfollow them because I don't want to see this all the time. Um, but you know, I'll I'll just educated guesses. What what's your favorite holiday tradition? Um, fire in the fireplace. Yeah. Problem solved. Which we need to get firewood. Yeah, we have to get firewood. 
Did you have someone for me to call for that or no? Yeah, I brought up a local company. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think we have, we don't have like a ton of traditions. Like I really like normal, like the Thanksgiving turkey sides and that kind of thing. I can tell you Wes's favorite yeah. tradition. What's that? It's the, um, oh yeah. The advent calendar. We have like a wooden German advent calendar and uh, Leanne puts M&Ms in it and Wes wakes up every morning and loves. Well, he, gets... now he really wants us to have one for Halloween and it's crazy. A I Halloween was... advent calendar? <laughs> Yes, I think it's such a good idea. And I looked and there's like not many at all and they're all you bad. You know that's like, Advent's like, it's not, that's not a secular thing. It's a countdown. <laughs> it's a countdown. You can, then you can make your own. Just, you can paint, you can get yeah, the I same know. one and you can paint it. And, and make it a haunted black house. And orange. It'd be so cool. That would be cool. I don't know why they don't make them. It, it seems like a great thing to do. Any interest in customer video reviews? I could totally review the crap out of the mini Bowery. <laughs> <laughs> I have two well-loved mini batteries. I, I mean, oh. absolutely. I think um, I've been seeing like less, that's, that's interesting. I've been seeing less like social proof like that. Mm. So, I mean, we're, we're all about that kind of stuff. If you guys feel that you want to do that and tag us in it, that's awesome. Because um, we want people to get, not be surprised when they order. So if you can yes. give them your honest opinion and review, we're all about that. Definitely. Um, and like, we also love that from the perspective of, hey, I would, I love this bag, but like this little thing, if that could change, it would be the best. You know what I mean? Like we love those little kinds of details. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. How do you ask customers for reviews without being annoying? That's interesting as a follow-up. Yeah. Um, we do, we usually do one or two uh, surveys a year and I think in there we kind of, do we recommend people to review? Maybe remember. we ask them if they I do I thought we review. had an automated thing that sends. We do have an automated thing for, I think, I believe it's like 10 days after your order ships. Um, we ask for a review if you want. I mean, that's all you can really do. You can't, I mean, you could incentivize people. If you look at it from a marketing perspective, you could say, I would usually spend, you know, five dollars to acquire a customer and if I give that five dollars to somebody or whatever instead of um, spending it on ads like does, will that give me the review which will get me future sales um, I think I, you don't want everybody's review I think is the reality too I think you want people that are really interested in what you're doing you mm -hmm. want their review um, like we had a couple we had actually just one person that could not figure out <laughs> how to print our PDF. Oh, yeah. um, and like he gave us a bunch of crap about it. And then I, we emailed back and forth and I gave him very specific instructions on how to do it. Um, I just, even told him like a free program you can do if, if, you, if, if this is outside your failed, world, yeah. just download this and here are the steps, do the thing. And he was just so frustrated. So obviously you don't want that person's review because it's one out of all the other people that, that have figured never it out just fine. Problem. Um, but I think, I think there's nothing wrong with asking. You can't expect, you can't expect a review. Um, so like, you can't be mad if they're like, no, thanks. Or like, no, or don't answer. You can't be mad. Yeah. Like how many times have you reviewed something? I only review things when I'm either really upset or I'm like really surprised and happy. So, mm. and it's really rare that I do that. So. I feel like I review a lot more than you do. You probably do. I usually do, especially if it's a small business. Well, that's different. What platform do you use for the survey? Google Forms, yeah. Um, it's pretty straightforward, and you can have like required questions, so like they can't skip it. Huh. Um, yeah. And it gives you a nice little spreadsheet that you can look at. It is a little clunky with like, I think multiple choice answers are ones that mm. people can add their own input in. Um, but if you have the time to, to look at it and that's, it's totally worth it. Um, and it's free. Gotta love free apps. <laughs> and I'm just thinking appetizers, not free apps. <laughs> love advent calendars. I might like make one this Christmas. Awesome.
Yeah, I less love that. I love the idea of a Halloween one. I think that's so fun. Did you ever go the Etsy route? So we did a long, long time ago when we first started. Long, long, long time. Um, I set up an Etsy and we sold exactly one thing. It was a leather bowl for some guy. And I shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we sell it like we, I was the like, day I you was telling you, I'm like, man, down. I'm going to shut this down. It's not working. And yeah. then someone bought something and like that figures. And then yeah. I shut it down anyway. Um, it really, for us, wasn't worth it. Um, even back then, it was becoming... A race to the bottom. Like a, a race to the bottom. And too competitive for handmade goods. Yeah. I think if you do something very specific, like gifty items or holiday-themed items... Mm -hmm. You can definitely be successful, um, but you'll you'll go on there now, and it's like an eBay now, or it's like it's it's a front of a manufacturer, like Amazon, or like or like an Amazon, which is actually how they're turning into too. It's like a front yeah. of a manufacturer trying to sell goods to you directly, as and if it's and handmade. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, there's definitely handmade people on there as, as well. But and to be honest, it's actually its interface is pretty confusing. It is. So, I was looking. I, we yeah, buy, really what do we buy through them? And we don't really Peace. want to. Oh yeah, the paint pens we buy. We buy through them. And I was looking for a review on a new one just to see if they were around. And for this particular maker or company or whatever their page was, I couldn't look at the specifics of that review but of, for that item, yeah. but I could look at them as a, as a seller's reviews. And that's not helpful to me. Like, I, I don't You're care. wanting to know about I that know product. About item. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of sucks it's saturated with the mass sellers. Yeah. I think, I mean, there's... They really should, like, does, figure out a way <laughs> to make that not happen. It's ridiculous. I mean, that's definitely, like, a business decision from people on Etsy doing that, obviously. Uh, the customers who buy from Etsy aren't your customers. It's nearly impossible to grow a customer base on there. That's a really, another really great point. Mm. And that's that kind of sense. why we... That's, that totally makes sense. That's why we also had our website. Right. Um, you're not really the same when you're selling on any other third party you're not cultivating a brand you're just mm -hmm. on a marketplace yeah you're just trying to get your stuff in front of someone so if what you do is really conducive to that that's great if it's not then that's not going to help you so I think it's always worth it to create a brand for yourself your company and um, do it that way that way you can learn lessons and not be at the mercy of another platform. So if like Etsy decides I'm not, you know, whatever, they don't like me anymore and they, they cancel me, I can't <laughs> sell on there anymore. And then like that's 100% of my, my sales, right? So, so you, gotta, you gotta figure it out. And for us, we have our website, so hopefully that doesn't go away, right? We own it, so. She's like, don't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to look out for yourself because they're looking out for themselves. So you have to do it for yourself. And we know people that were successful on Etsy way oh, back yeah. when. Um, I think they've since had to scale back, but when is the H and H podcast coming out? I think you're watching. I don't know if there's enough demand for that. Yeah. <laughs> seem like everyone's doing a podcast these days. I think I would like a podcast, but I, it's not, to me, it's not that different than this. Well, unless we had guests on, that would be the main difference. Yeah, having guests would be different, but are people really around 1030 on Thursday? Well, you maybe have real to, question. you'd have to do it at a different time, sir. And we'd have to come up with topics. I was going to say, there would have to be, like, we'd have to talk about other things than just this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could come up with stuff. Um, we would have to just, we would have to write it down, think about it, and, like, create an actual agenda and do all that stuff. Because right now we're just kind of just winging it. <laughs> Daniel says I'm around at 1030 on a Thursday. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's why we're still here. Is it Daniel? Maybe Daniel could just be part of our podcast. He could be yeah, could third be member. H and H and 
Yes. An American and the ASG. Right? Or is it Skinner America good? I always yeah. mess it up. Yeah, you do. But yeah, we are really close to finishing up October, or, geez, October, September's orders. It was like, October just got here, what are you October talking about? October just started, everyone <laughs> calm down. Um, so that's exciting. That is exciting, that always makes me really happy. Well, before we had to take a little break there, we were like, we were cruising. Ugh, we were, I would have we been like ahead. way ahead of it. And I, I would have like, been like awesome. way Perfect. ahead. It's but. so frustrating. But I had to get sick. Like I mean, that's idiot. How, <laughs> Small business works, right? Sorry. Well, Just... that got me thinking again about like the future and like having a team and that kind of stuff. Yeah. This is Leanne's favorite thing to make, in case you're wondering. You do. Anybody want to order a ready? Because I love making them. <laughs> That is one of my favorite things. I feel to make. like I just look over and they're done. That's why I love to make them. <laughs> Whoa, what, what did you know that what it is? They have like a very good ratio of hand stitching to machine stitching. And like mm. I don't have it to spend a ton of time at the sander or the burnisher. Honestly, mean, the only small. Yeah. The only that thing that's annoying about them is um, this last bit of sanding and painting and burnishing. Otherwise, they're pretty fun to do. The, like the top part? Yeah. It's only annoying because the other part's already attached, so you have to be really careful oh, that right. you don't like get in the way of yourself. Uh, Nick, did you finish that book? Yes, and I finished another one. <laughs> yeah, why haven't you talked about um, this? Anything any good? <laughs> Was it zero to one? <laughs> yeah, that was the first one you finished. And then there was another one, I thought. All right, book time. Um, so I finished zero to one, which I liked. Oh, I thought you didn't like that. No, this is good. Oh, OK. And then I just finished EOS Life, which was pretty good, too. Some, it's like a similar. Were either of them helpful? How to, to live you? your ideal entrepreneurial life. I mean, that sounds great. Um, it's it's tough. Like a lot of these books are about like delegating, and who, am I, who am I going to delegate to? Just me. <laughs> so it's, and obviously, our structure of two individuals <laughs> is different than like a, a small, small team. So, I mean. And it's not like I don't have experience with that. And you, like we both have experience delegating. with small teams. And yeah. And medium-sized teams. Yep. So, it's not. It's nothing's like groundbreaking. But if you've never been in that world, they're definitely helpful, and it's a good way, a good perspective, on how to be effective. Because a lot of people just assume that you're you can only be effective if you're the one doing it, and that's just wrong. That's definitely wrong. Incorrect. Um, so, those are both good. And then I didn't start this one yet, but. It's not about the mangoes, is the next book I'm reading. What is that about? Organizational success means putting people first. I'd love to understand the mango By Ken and, Coleman. and the tire reference. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to learn about it when I read it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. That's real weird. You need well, to open I mean, up like I'm a gonna tiny make library. A bowl, I'm going to make an assumption that it's not about the product, right? It's about the people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then. I recently, I think I have two more or three more other books coming um, oh, around yeah. the same topic. And it's about, it's kind of about like town infrastructure and how we can make things more human scale, better, uh, better like better places to live um, through infrastructure. And so this one's called Walkable City. Um, this one's called Street Fight. Street Fight? Yeah. <laughs> this one's called Strong Towns. 
So I have an interest in like how people live and work and move around their space. And um, like a lot of European countries and, and towns and cities do a really great job of having something called a third place, which is where you can spend time that's free. Um, it's not necessarily, it's just, it's there to be there. And it's like a park is a great example. Um, or a coffee but the, shop. But the park has to be located in a place where people naturally walk through, live, um, and all that other stuff. It can't just be like out of the way, like you don't drive to the park. It's got to be part of your community. Um, so I'm very interested in that stuff. So I can't like wait how to... I said that there should be a coffee shop on the way to us walking west to school. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Exactly like that. So how do you make things convenient um, and easier, and especially with all the sprawl that we experience in America in our small in like our suburban sprawl area? Um, we can kind of reimagine our spaces through different zonings and different um, uses so that it's the best area and space for people to live in. So that's some future future books. Not related to anything like this that we're talking about. <laughs> but next is It's Not About the Mangoes. <laughs> I'll be back there in a second. I'm just going to hand some to my dolls. What's that? I'm just hand punching to hand stitch. Yeah, it's always good to have a broad range of topics that you'd like to learn about. Who knows? Let's go to a, a town town meeting. Well, I still <laughs> think you should we'll like join person. the zoning board. Don't I'll you be think? the crazy person. I think you should join the zoning board. Well, I guess I could join the, the zoning board. That would be fun. I think it would be fun. I think you would learn a lot. It's tough. I think people... As you know, I think people have a hard time envisioning what the future looks like, and they're scared to let go of the present sometimes. So like, if you tell, if you tell people that the zoning is going to be different for this particular area, um, I guess that's why you have to explain it. Never mind. Sorry, I'll be over in a second. That's right. Let's see. Have you watched Not Just Bikes series on strong towns on YouTube? I haven't. I also follow a lot of urban design channels on YouTube, and I'm really interested in it. Awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think we can just make such better use of our space and like yeah. the livability of our, of our towns, I think. Because we used to do it. Like, small town America, right, used to be a main strip, which was was uh, all your local shops on the bottom, and then it had like multi-use, multi-purpose um, apartments, condos, whatever, up top, and it wasn't just all like <laughs> spread out. So um, one place that reminds me, like the Piazza in Philly, I don't even know what it looks like these days, but in in Northern Liberties, in Northern Liberties, mm. um, they had like that that central space, and then there was like, like the restaurants where you could walk through, like. I'm not gonna call them corridors, but like, yeah. <coughs> um, and it was it was really nice. It was cool. It's nice to do that. I think it wasn't. But I'll have to check well those out. Thank you. Well. Not just books. And I think we're not gonna really have a choice. Like we're gonna have to figure out different uses. Just punch each other. Towns. <laughs> Are there some patterns for sale on your website? Yes. Yes. We have a, a section called Make With Us. And it's we have a few in there. Oh, this is probably not that interesting to people, but <laughs> <laughs> here are some here things. is something different that we did. Um, so for the first time ever, when making taking our patterns from paper to oh. um, illustrator files. So we could send them off to the die maker. Um, I got my, I went and scanned all my pattern pieces 
so that it was easier to... I like the lighting isn't coming weird on my cheek. Do you see that? Um, yeah, I scanned all the pattern pieces so that it was easier to make the Illustrator files for them. And I, I kind of just felt like with this batch with the Chloe's, because I really used my French curve so much to make those bags. Um, I, it was, there was not a straight line on that bag. Yeah, it was <laughs> very necessary for me to do that. Um, and it just went so quickly. Um, it felt, I was kind of like, why did I never do this before? <laughs> it just made it a lot easier. Um, and we don't have a scanner, so I just went to Staples and like sat there for like 10 minutes and just scanned everything. It was like four bucks, so. Um, but then Nick was like, we should probably just do that with the other patterns that you want to sell on the website. And I was like, oh yeah, that would make it a lot faster. <laughs> so hopefully we can get some more of those done this year. Um, especially once we get like all the holiday orders done, it could be something we could focus on. It's something that we've been meaning to do for sure. Where'd you go? <coughs> Oops. Ah. What? Nothing. Did you just spill? Oh, a little bit. What number are you on there? What number am I on? Uh-huh. This is number two. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pay our quarterly taxes today. Oh, goody. Can't wait. And maybe a back quarter. Whoops. <coughs> oh, goody. Did you ignore all these? I did. What did you do <laughs> with your prototypes, and how much, how many yeah, iterations do you go through? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, so usually they sit around the shop for a while until we might sell them. Um, the prototypes. The prototypes. Um, sometimes there's two. It's usually the one. It's usually, I'd say it's usually one to three depending on the design iterations. Three would be pretty rare. It is rare. Yeah, you're right. Two is more normal. Um, blueprint shops can scan large pieces for cheap. Sorry. Ow. Sorry. They can print them on large format paper. Whoa. Yeah, yeah you can do that at FedEx and I think you do it at Staples as well. Um, none of my pattern pieces are all that big and they have 11 by 17 scanners, so just spent a little time at my our local stables. <laughs> <laughs> Got that done. Got familiar with the pens and papers. Dead. Copiers. Those types of equipments. The trick though is to make sure you have your phone with you so that you can check your scans are correct because I messed up the first batch. I don't even know how you did that to be honest. I It wasn't my fault. It wasn't? No. Okay. It was the guy that helped me. <laughs> he was like, just He's put like, it. He's like, I'm going to get four extra dollars out of you. <laughs> well, I don't think that was his intention, I know, but I know. he was saying to put it on automatic scan so it was, it's supposed to detect when you have something there to scan, mm -hmm. but I kind of think because like the card stock is yeah, a manila. light, yeah, that it just didn't do a very good job of detecting it. Also, the setting he put it on washed everything out. Like, I couldn't read the writing. It was like low contrast? I don't know what he picked, but it wasn't, it wasn't the best option. Like, I picked the best option when I went back, and I just made it be 11 by 17, so no matter what, it was gonna scan the whole bed. That makes sense. My patterns can be 40 to 45 inches long, so they won't fit on the normal scanner. Oh, and, that I mean, makes pants, sense, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy pants, patterns, <laughs> trademark. Yeah, mine are pretty small. I think the only thing that was too big was the one um, strap, but I just scanned half of it because you just mirror it anyway. I mean, I think the longest would be, for us would be like a gusset, but the gussets they're, are usually they're all pretty straight, straight, yeah. straight lines, so. It's not especially difficult. Yeah, for this it was more of like all of the, the, sh the like 
general shape of that bag. It's just very curvature, lots of curvature going on. <laughs> my, my Google Analytics stopped working this morning. Awesome. Crazy Pants is a great brand name, rebrand. What's <laughs> <laughs> um, up, Crazy Pants? So, so I think it's Universal Analytics. Or Pants Dance. Stopped working. So now I'm on GA4, and I love it. I do not believe you. I just have to get used to it. I'm gonna I've been looking at both of them at the this. same time, so I yeah. am used to it now. I just it's I prefer the other one just for like real time looking at stuff. <clears throat> have you had a demand for SLG pieces? Because I'm demanding SLG. SLG pieces, single layer. I don't know what SLG is. Yeah, I don't know what SLG is. It's probably something so simple that that we should know. We should we don't. know. Can you translate? <laughs> I can't. On the SLG. We have had a rise in like asking for custom stuff, which is interesting. Oh yeah, and probably because it's coming close to the Still don't do it. If you sure don't. Um, Typically, it doesn't always go well. Like, like I said earlier about the other stuff, we're just not optimized, like, as a business to do that. <coughs> yeah. Oh, small leather goods. I knew that. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, interestingly for us, it's almost the opposite. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Um, because I, I've been hearing that small goods are, like, flying for most people, and it's just not the case for us. And to be honest, it never really was. No, it's we never been. At, we like, tried. Person shows. Yeah, yeah. We tried to have a bunch of small stuff. Um, it never. And you would think something like this would be, like, one yeah. of the top top sellers, but it just just isn't. Yeah. Um, I think. Luckily for us, we've cultivated a customer base that wants bags. Yeah. So. I would like to know, <clears throat> what SLG is that you <laughs> are interested in, like what small other goods. I think what's hard about those is it's a competition thing. So like you can get a keychain from us or someone else. Like you can, it's not necessarily that much different mm -hmm. design wise unless it's like wacky or crazy pants. Or crazy pants. Hello, good day. That's all I got. I'm trying to read your Spanish, I'm sorry. Yeah. Know what that word meant? Don't know. There needs to be auto translate these days. I know, it's really ridiculous. I love your designs and your ethics, and you two are my favorite couple. Oh, oh there that's we go. very nice. Thank <laughs> Mine <you>. too. <laughs> 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 uh, she's pretty great. Well, thanks. Yesterday, Wes told me that he was happy he was born. It's a good realization. It was pretty cute. I love small collectible pieces like, oh, what's that word? Collage, collagettes, and key cases. They're on all the words of us today. <laughs> Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we'll just pretend that we know what we're talking about. We're real smart. <laughs> yeah, I could see collectible. I think, um, so like Coyer Leather does small small goods and is very successful at it and he does like unique things so that totally makes sense to me um like he's right now doing i think um that marble shell cordovan mm -hmm. and he's like handwriting in each one of his wallets oh, right, it's right. like i think it's a 16 year anniversary project he's doing which is really cool that's cool and like stuff like that totally makes sense to me um uh but that's that's not i don't think that's something we necessarily would do and then my four-year-old told me the other day that she never wants to be 31 because that's so old. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's rough. no. Uh, 31. Sounds like a baby. I wish I was 31. <laughs> yeah. Kids are weird. <laughs> they sure are. They say real weird stuff. They say weird, or super weird things. So. 
seems fine. Sounds terrible. I know, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited to get these dies for the Chloe's. Yeah, they usually take about two weeks to get, um, which is totally fine. Yeah, that'll work. And we usually mess a couple of them up. We usually do. As is tradition. Well, maybe the scans will help me to not mess them up. True. So. Although I don't Worst know, case I bet scenario, I could. It's all hand cut down. And then I lose my mind. And Leanne loses, loses her mind. Yes. I an extra fuzzy. I know, I've noticed that too. I wonder, is it fuzzy for other people? It's probably because I have the, um, I'm streaming music. Oh. Hey YouTube, are you fuzzy? Hey YouTube, are you fuzzy? <clears throat> What'd you do? I don't know. I'm pressing buttons. I'm sorry. Stop doing that. It wasn't on purpose. Uh, it usually isn't, but... <laughs> it's definitely never. <laughs> I think what else... What else are we doing? I don't know. Nah, I don't know. I mean, it's like holiday time for us now. Yeah, just it's try to get the orders done. Do it. Out. Do it. I've been working on our... On Wes's bedroom a lot, which is That's true. I kind of, I feel like I should show people that. I think when it's done, it's fine. Yeah. True. You've, been, you've been doing that for a while. I have to finish the floors. Yeah. Yes, you do, because I want our house back together. Yeah. Please. I, I think, know, I want to. I just. I think you need to muster up. <laughs> <laughs> you need to muster it's, up. It's all about moving the couch. Ability next week, maybe? Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay. I wanted it done last week, but here, I we, mean, are. here we are. We got sick, so that's fair. Do you ship to India? I believe so. Yep, we ship everywhere. Worldwide. I don't know if we ship everywhere. Oh. We ship wherever USPS, FedEx, UPS goes. There you go. I'm sure there's somewhere we don't ship. Don't lie to the people. Oh, sorry. But yes, we do ship to India, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if we've sold to... To India? India. Hmm. I don't either. We sold to Europe and well, Australia a bit. Canada. Yeah. Germany quite a bit. Japan. Hmm. Germany, England, Italy. France. France. Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Good question. Thanks for joining us on that. Country by country tour. <laughs> when did you guys start? Uh, we started in 2017. Um, we launched a website with a collection, an Etsy. <laughs> and we did in-person shows yeah, for we did in -person a while. Shows. Did we do any other online? Well, Instagram. We tried to do like, it's kind of embarrassing, but we tried to like drum up support for our business ahead of time. And it's just like with, you know, a hundred followers probably. Oh, I don't even remember that. Yeah. That's because I. Oh, before I've we had a website, stuff. you mean? Yeah, like right before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Um, but you got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> oh, I need square loops. Um, they sh they're in the mail. They're probably stuck in New York. They'll probably be here Great. Friday. Okay. You know, oops. What? Yeah, but we did we did shows and kind of got like oh. really good feedback from customers and it kind of really stemmed from that. It felt unreal for people like to be buying stuff from us in that situation. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, it always takes longer to do things than you expect, no matter what it is. That's the case for me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh my god, <laughs> so much longer. It's so have to plan it though. So you gotta you gotta say I'm doing that thing. Um, yeah. So that it gets done, but That's it's true. definitely. I am very good, personally, I am very good at estimating times, time frames. It's a skill set I have. I don't know why. I don't know that I'm necessarily good at that. But, but I always do know it's going to take longer than I think. So yeah. I just don't necessarily know how long. It just depends how much like direct attention you can focus on. I was going to say, yeah. Because like, I could get a lot done if I can focus 
on it for a long period of time. Yeah, like, you're, you're getting to the point where I'm like... You can't keep up. I can't keep up. I know, it's my favorite, Which actually. is hilarious, because I'm like, what are you doing over there? What magical bag powers are you employing? I don't know, but it is my absolute... I'm just like, what? <laughs> it's my favorite when you get behind. <laughs> she, li she likes when I have to do hard work. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. Okay. It makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> you should, there's, just, in no world should you be feeling bad about yourself. <laughs> Ever. I don't feel bad about myself, but yeah. like, I'm like, ha ha. I beat you, <laughs> even though you didn't know you were in a race. Just your ways of time management. Um, say no to everything that's not. Um... I once got advice to say yes, yes everything. Ugh, it was no. the worst. Thing. I mean, maybe if you're starting out and you need the experience to say and, yes to stuff. And I was. Sure. But, but I like, also disagree. You have to learn. You have to learn if it's not like moving you towards your goal. It doesn't. It doesn't work for you so don't do it yeah and that's a lot easier also if you done. can't deliver on it like yeah if you can't deliver on it don't even don't, don't do it do it um, unless you're super ambitious and can eventually figure it out but that's hard i feel like those things don't necessarily work for me yeah like there's not like a special way I just like i don't work best to... under pressure sort of thing you know yeah, what i mean some not. people it's, work great she, under a deadline she works <laughs> she works best when like everything's great <laughs> so I have to pretend everything's great when it's not, which is fine for me. I work best under pressure. If there's nothing that's like pressing, I feel weird. You are weird. And I hate it. And <laughs> I pretend everything's fine all the time. Yeah, exactly. And that works for you. It feels great. <laughs> so you gotta figure out what works for you. Because <laughs> those two things okay. wouldn't, shouldn't be compatible. No, they shouldn't. I guess they are. Well, part of it is because we know each other and ourselves very well, yeah. so. When Leanne gets stressed about stuff, it's it's almost like she works backwards, and it's incredible. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. What do you mean? Like, I slow down a lot? Well, you get really slow, and you also, like, you I get so frustrated that you're like, why am I even doing this? That is accurate. And then you just live in that world for, like, way too long. You've been, I mean, you're not, you haven't done that in a long time, but. No, um, getting better. No, for sure. I'll tell you though, I think our the way we do orders now is the key to my happiness. Yeah, it works a lot better for you. Oh my god, it it is the key to my happiness. I, so I hope we don't have to ever change it <laughs> because. Well, it gives us it gives us more control over production, which is yeah. which makes sense because then you don't have to do like a batch of like Phoebe's and then all of a sudden there's one more. Yeah, and that's like, well, the most frustrating thing on the planet and just feel like you're never, you just never get a sense of accomplishment ever. <laughs> but now Yeah, I doing do. things as like one off, like one individual bags one at a time is like, well, and even now, even hard work. that does happen sometimes, but like that to me is actually yeah. like fine because I can still see well, like it's a little break. the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, you also know that that design is not going to, there's not going to be another one. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, it's not going to just pop up. Right, right, right. True. Oh, the why am I even doing this conversation happens a lot, happens a lot over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Well, well I get myself into for <laughs> the last five years. For the last, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. I realize I have an irrational fear of finishing everything, and then what will I do, both at work and at home? Oh, no. Oh, that's interesting. So that sounds a little bit like self-sabotage, mm. which is, makes sense. Um, just the fear of finishing everything. And sometimes a game I have to play with Leanne is like, what's the worst that could possibly happen? That's true. And once you go, once you think about it and you go, oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah. Like, say, I don't know. Except for when you tell me that we're going to live in our cars. That's just jokes. <laughs> but, that doesn't work so well. But if you break it down to yourself and you go, well, what's the worst that could possibly happen? Okay, I don't have any, I don't have any work to do. Um, is that so bad? Does that give you time to do something else? Like you have to, yeah, you have to play that game with yourself maybe. I just think about all the things I'd love to be doing <clears throat> if I had free time. If I had free time. Yeah, yeah, I can get that though, especially as a small business. Like, if we had nothing to do, 
it would be a problem, right? Because that means money's yeah, not coming in. Yeah, that's not good. Um, that means we're not busy. But it's that so also interesting, to though, me that's... means you should, like, you have to accept the slow times with the fast times. So, like, we have, like, seasons to our business. So when it's slow, we know for us, like, that's when we strategize certain other parts of our yeah. business. Um, I feel like I would just make back inventory. If that ever happened. She says that all the time, but it's never happened. <laughs> well, because I'm never, I'm never done. No, I know. And let's even be the real. slow times, like we we have, we've been fortunate that we've had enough work to carry us through. Yeah. Um. Like we were caught up once this year, right? Yeah. Which is funny because I think that was one of our busiest times too when I when we did that. I think. I don't remember. It was at the beginning, wasn't it? Towards the beginning of the year. I was like. We weren't caught up. No. no, we weren't caught up until July. Oh, when we went on vacation. Yeah. Okay, okay. Were we even really fully caught up then? No. Like we had, we had like. I don't remember. No, we might have been. I don't remember. Right. I realize it's a irrational, but how to get past it is the question. Um. Well, yeah. How do you... I would think about what you want to do if yeah. you got caught up. If there was nothing to do, what yeah. would you want to do? Create a plan for what's beyond that so you can strive for it instead of be afraid of it. Yeah, because to me, I'm like constantly like, if I can get this done, then <laughs> I, can do, fun I stuff. can do this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And I like am kind of constantly thinking about that, actually. <laughs> Like, I don't know whatever is fun to you, but, like, I would think of, because, I mean, I find certain things really fun that other people would be like, why would that be the thing you would choose to do? But, yeah. um, <clears throat> like, I am constantly thinking, I, so, like I said before, I'm working on Wes's bedroom, mm -hmm. and I've been working on it for a long time, but I'm making progress on it, and it's looking really good, and it makes me feel really good. And so that's the thing I always think about. I'm like, ooh, if I get this done, then this weekend I can get that door done that I wanted to finish or whatever, <laughs> which is weird, but. Have you tried to dye veg tan leather? I know a long time ago we did, but we, we realized that was not something we really wanted to do. I really don't like messy things. Yeah, I'm with you. And that is too messy for me. Yeah. And for me, it's, I think it's difficult to get that as consistent as we would want it to be. Yes. So we rely on our tannery to do that kind of stuff for us. Yeah. Um, I know there's somebody we know that does, um, they paint on, oh, yeah. on Vachela, I think, mm -hmm. and they all, they do custom color work and stuff like that, and it's yeah. really cool. Um, and she makes it look neat. <laughs> like, yeah, she makes it look good. Yeah, but I don't think I would enjoy that personally. That's what's so cool about leather work. There's just so many different ways oh my to gosh. make it your own. It really um, is. Sometimes I think about that actually a lot. Like, <laughs> thanks for the mini therapy session. Yeah, of course. Anytime. It's it's a weird world out there, in, and it's in, in here and wherever. So yeah. And I think it's hard for people to grasp, especially people who don't make their own stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like how in your head you can get, or how personal it can feel. Uh, so that that all makes sense. What are some things you think about doing with having free time, Nick? Is it reading books? So, I don't know. Oh, I mean, really? Well. I feel like that's all I can. I, like, think about that all the time. I, and I, mean, I think things, about other the things. The things I want to do are, like, I want to get, like, our garden in a good spot. Yeah. I want to plant trees and shrubs and stuff. Yeah. I think about home stuff. I do, cause too. Because I, like, I like that. I also, I I also thinking about, like, going out to get, like, a coffee. <laughs> going out into the world. Yeah, perhaps. yeah. I think about that a lot. But yeah, nothing like, nothing crazy. We're just going to visit friends. I just have long-term plans for like what I want our house to look like and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the same. What sewing machine were you using before the Cobra? Oh man, we got the Cobra early on in our journey. But before that, we had a Singer Patcher 29-4K. Um, tiny bobbin, 92 thread, I think. But it could rotate. And, and the needle could rotate 360 degrees. Which was um, the coolest Super thing cool. Ever. Not really practical for our needs, but we learned how to sew on it. So, <laughs> or I did. And, yeah. 
I almost shut everything down earlier this year because of the pressure and the weirdness of running your own business. It's such a weird place to be. Yeah, it yeah. really is. And that's the crazy thing that's hard to kind of, like at any moment, like mm -hmm. we could be done. And I think I know. Not to. <laughs> <laughs> try not to. She tries not to. But it's just the reality. Like if we aren't in a place where we're like gaining customers, gaining sales, um, that's where that's it. <laughs> like if you can't pay your bills, you can't pay your bills. Yeah. Um, just because we have our own business doesn't mean we don't have bills like a mortgage and student loans and all other stuff. So. And it's and a child that needs to eat food. Yeah, supposedly. Um. And a lot of our strategy relies, or like, revolves around that and how we can create, like, a buffer for ourselves so that um, if anything were to happen, yeah, we wouldn't be in trouble. How do you guys deal with returns from fussy customers? Mm -hmm. So that's great. That's great, too. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. We're pretty fortunate. I think we try to lay it all out there so that we get as few returns as possible. I think it's important to be as upfront with what your customer is getting from you so that you can mitigate returns through your whole process. Um, we don't, it, it does happen. Yeah, we don't get a ton. And it does tend to happen. So I don't know why this is, but if we have a customer that almost over interacts with mm. us, for some reason, they that's won't. the customer that returns. Um, and I haven't figured out necessarily why. It's interesting because like they're the ones that like verify <coughs> the details, the size of the bag, and then it's wrong when they get it. So I don't really know how to help that person besides let them just go through the process, like just accepting like that we're gonna have, you know, five percent return rate or something like that. Um, so. I, we try our best to answer as much as possible before someone even decides to purchase with us. Um, the other thing for us specifically is we're not selling a cheap product, so it's not, I feel like it's less impulsive, so it's more considered. Are those really the last thing I need to do? These? Yeah. Yeah, after this? Yeah. Yeah. Are you there already? I mean, basically, All because right. I have to finish I can't... painting the, those. Well, my thought was, uh, is anything on there finished paint? Like, could I make just just that stack is finished pa being painted, like the of the, which isn't helpful for you. No, um, you know what would be helpful though when you do go over there to paint, if you can paint like all the zipper pieces, great first, or like the pockets. The ones I always save for last. <laughs> <laughs> you could do the That's pockets. That's fine. I'll, I'll yeah. It's, it doesn't matter. Because you already have the um. You already have the little pocket. If you did the zipper hole for those other ones first, that would be helpful. Okay. Because I, for these, I really like to work in like. Yeah, you're gonna have components. to. Components. Yeah. Oh, I could start on the gussets at least. Sorry, but um, so returns happen. You have to kind of accept it. Um, and then you have to ask. You have to ask yourself, how could you have avoided it? Um, and then try to avoid it as much as possible. Some things can't be avoided. Um, sometimes people don't like the color when they get it sometimes it's the bag's a little bit smaller than they expected or bigger uh, mm -hmm. you know it, it just depends on that person and you can't be in everybody's mind so but i have Do noticed think? for whatever reason if i'm having someone Switch. ask me like yeah 10 20 questions about something um i'd say to land like this one's coming back yeah it's true. I, I think what it is is they're an indecisive person. That's why they're asking so many questions. Maybe. And I never want to hard sell to anybody. Like I want no. you to sell yourself on it. Like I'm not gonna I'm not and gonna you be like you I need don't. this. Yeah. I'm more of the opinion like please don't buy it unless you know you want it. Yeah. It helps to find community with others in the same space and get help moving out of those entrenched thought patterns. Oh mm, for sure. Yes. I mean the leather group's been invaluable for that. Oh hundred percent. I also feel like having other creative things that you do yeah. outside. You need to do other things besides your, your job, your work, your, what you do. And it's harder for makers, I think, because it's so yeah. part of who you are. Yeah. But do you think there's a market for veg tanned pieces that are pre-dyed with creative surface design looks? 
So like basically like Yeah, pattern. our friend does that. Um, we have a friend that does. Animal Handmade? No, no. I'm thinking, well, they changed their name. Loyalty Leather. Oh. Uh, Liz, I forget. What's your name that? L something? No, but like, I think they're mean. Do you mean like embossed printed or do you mean oh. um, like painted patterns? For some reason I got dyed in there. Pre-dyed with creative surface design looks. So yeah, that could see. be both. Uh, re returns are just a part of running a business while educated customer is the best defense against returns. Yeah, no, uh, uh, 100%. My husband, Stody Brothers, had a lady return a leather purse because it smelled like leather. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Oh, man. Right. So when there's mis mismatched expectations, it's usually when yeah. you get returns. Yeah. But uh, that's, that's all. Like, how do you, that how one, do you win that? Like, that you smell one is a scratch and stiff. This is what you should expect. Fantastic. How do you educate customers that leather scratches can be natural? can be naturally there. Mm. I feel like folks are easily turned off by small scratches. Um, yeah. That's it's going to depend on the quality of your leather. And scratches happen. Yeah. Or they just, like, scarring happens. Um, I know for us, we try to avoid them as much as possible. Or we put them on places that are, like, the backside of a pocket of a that pocket you're never going to see. That you won't see. Um, we try to use, utilize those things as much as possible. Um, but there will be natural variations in leather. I think. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had too much. No. I think the problems you run into when it's like that, um, like the fatty stretch marks. Would that make sense? Oh yeah, like the tiger striping. Like the tiger striping. Like that's not my personal favorite, and we try to keep them out of bags. Yeah. You can sometimes go between the tiger stripes and get gusset pieces. Um, but. I mean, I would, yeah, that is really hard. I would, you know what one thing I, you, you could suggest, or my one thing I could suggest, I guess two things. One, I would make it very clear on the website, like have it in each product page as part of the description, like natural variations. We don't really talk about it at all, actually. No, I don't know if we do, but um, can happen because it, leather is a natural product. Mm -hmm. But then also you could have like an image of like a brand new, let's say you made wallets. A brand new wallet versus like um, you know a broken in wallet next to it, so that people can see like, oh my piece is going to patina from this to that, mm -hmm. or you know, because yeah. part of patinaing is scratching. You get scratches with that too. True. <clears throat> and I think yeah, that's that's the angle, right? I mean, like it gets better with age, and exactly, yeah. it does. I think it's tougher for the lighter leathers. Like if yeah. you're doing something that's super light, light it's color, like a natural, yeah. It, it won't look um, as great, in my opinion, until it's like fully patinaed. Right. Uh, one of the biggest positive changes I've made in my business is sticking to a strict schedule. Doesn't matter if I'm behind or not. You have to take the time off to recharge oil burnout. Yeah. I Treat it like you're at a nine to agree. five in some ways. I completely agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, since Wes is now in like regular school, I've been taking weekends, and like I feel so much better yeah. doing that. You can tell. <laughs> I kind of like the tiger stripe thing in leather. A lot of people actually yeah. really like it. it I don't. Like it, it can it be sought after. Um, yeah. For us, like the bigger panel pieces, when they're like fully tiger striped, it's it. I think people assume that it's a um, a deformity or it's a weakness, and it's it's not. It's just part of how the leather, how the, how the, the skin grew, how the yeah. cow grew. Um, and it's between like fat folds. So it's just part of it. Interestingly, I used to work for Sturdy Brothers. They're great people. Oh, cool. Small who's, world. Who's that? Daniel. Ah, uh, yes. Educating on Fatina. No, who's Sturdy Brothers? A company. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think it's tough because like luxury bag companies have basically stamped their leather so it's so consistent across the board like that they get that mm. cross hatch or they get like um, like a dimpled effect and it, it kind of makes people assume that leather is going to be 
uniform. Mm. And for them, they can cover up not so great surface um, and yield more because it's all hidden, right? It doesn't really matter. It's just right. part of it. Um, that's one of the cool things about veg tan is it's not like heavily finished. You can see the grain, um, the life that's there and all that cool stuff. So it's just different. Smell too much I, like weather though. It's I love my like, purse. I'm never going to forget that. Someone loves their purse. Oh, yay. That's good to hear. It smells a little too leathery. <laughs> it's literally leathery. Don't know what to tell you. It's so funny, though, because any returns we've ever gotten, we can immediately smell the person when we get, get them. You can smell their, like, perfume. It's not creepy their... at all. I mean, you can. I agree about the luxury bags. Yeah, I mean, it's a cost savings measure, right? Um, because what we're trying to do is use the best parts of the hide and the cleanest parts and they're just stamping a thing on there and calling it um, calling it done. What do you do with your leather scraps? We sell them. Is there a secondary market for that? There is. Yeah. And we, yeah, we sell them. When we have enough, we box them up and sell them to other crafters and stuff, which is really cool. Who doesn't love the smell of brand new leather? I, I, I mean, I most know. people do. Uh, most people, that was like one of the things that was the funniest about markets. People would come up to our, yeah, and smell our tent everything. and just be like, mm. like creepily smelling stuff and then like walking away. Okay. Are these being Yeah, I don't know. No, none of that's painted. Are these painted? Do you want me to tell you again? Only only that's painted. Oh, right, 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 right. The whole side's not. It's fine, I'll just keep doing this. <laughs> you have, yeah, there's four of these. Um, The half circle, what the tan half circle, mm -hmm. you want the top or the whole thing? Uh, you can, you can do the whole thing. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. I feel I like guess, I always get confused. I guess really then a better uh, thing to say is just don't ever do the tops on any of them because I have to cut off. A little bit on the, oh, the black, black ones, ones too. Well, I have to cut off a little bit of the black top of the black ones anyway, so okay. it's pointless for you to do it. And then the other one is underneath the pocket. So, so just the can't... circle part. Yeah. Wow, my mind's blown. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna put Jimmy John style free smell sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy John. Yeah, I want. I want like so. Make Jersey Mike's or something. We could bottle of that smell. Make perfume. Well, what's funny Bottom. is I can't even smell it anymore. Yeah, I can't either. We haven't been able to unless, smell it for years, really. Unless I just like get in there. The only one that smells a little bit more to me is the um, the natural. You can smell a little bit more. Are there industry conventions for leather craft? There is. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things. Um, no, I want JJ's for lunch. I don't think I've ever been there. Um, oh, yeah, there's, yeah. so like, I'm going to say, Linnea Pele. Linnea Pele is like a really large leather uh, show. Trade show. Trade show. They're usually in Milan, New York. Do they do a. S and it's twice a year? Yeah, I think. There's also a Sheraton. That one Sheraton. I would really like to go to. Yeah, there's like craft style ones. Um, I'd like to go. What? Sheridan's just a lot further. New York is a lot closer, so True. it's a lot easier for us to get to that. But Sheridan, I feel like it's way more crafty, but you learn so much stuff. Like, I just feel like you learn so much stuff. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, Lenny Pele is more just about leather, just meeting with yeah, it's leather. Yeah, like, it's like leather vendors, yeah. um, up and coming leather styles. Yeah, like any trade show, yeah. they talk it's, about. It's like, more like. More kind of like a fashion. <clears throat> yeah, it reminds me of like the print trade shows yeah. I would go to a lot. Even though it's not like fashion. It's, but. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. 
It's starting to get warm down here. You're hot? It's starting to get warm. Hmm. Probably because you're sitting so close to the light. I'm not hot at all. Which is weird, because yesterday I was so hot. Yeah, I just wanted to be cool fall weather. It will. I'm, I'm ready. I think it's right. I think that's happening this weekend. This weekend? Yeah, it's going to be like 60s and like rainy on Saturday. And then I think Sunday it's going to, so Sunday we're going to go do pumpkins, just FYI. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's going to be really nice and cool, but not rainy. It's just normal. How would you describe your typical customer slash customer characteristics? <clears throat> what do you think? Get on the camera. I just realized people are just watching me. Wow. I, I was while I was doing this before. It's just hard for me to do it there. Um, oops. Customer characteristics. I mean, we have a couple different customers, but I always yeah. think overall they're, just, they're like a creative person. Yeah, um, I agree. They appreciate like the quality of the material that we use. Um, mm -hmm. They, they might have a small bag problem, which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like totally fine. Yeah, it's totally um, fine. They might have a bag problem. <laughs> um, I like to think of our customers that have like a capsule wardrobe. Mm -hmm. um, they're just, you know, they're thoughtful. Yeah. But I agree. I think they're usually people that are, not always, but like usually mm -hmm. people that are more on the creative end. Um, even like, yeah, like creative business person or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe. That's a general. That's a vague, but that's general. Yeah. Do you guys do wholesale or have you? Um, we kind of did a little tiny bit of wholesale. At the very beginning. At the very beginning. Um, Lane was actually just talking about that this morning. Yeah, he was. It's not, we're not super set up for that. Um, but it's something that we just, it bounces around our head every once in a while. Yeah. One of these days we'll meet up at Lenny, Lenny, uh, Lenny oh. Pele. Oh, man. That would be awesome. I would love to get everyone together. I know. It would really be fun. Hello, hello. That's an odd question. What? Do you think that this very large number is a fathomable amount? I think it's... I th amount pretty, of what? Exactly. Yeah. But I think... What is it? Stars, yeah. I forget how it works. It's like people... The difference between like a million and a billion and a trillion... Mm. I'm going to get it wrong, but it's like something like 22 days, 38 years, and yeah. like a million, and like a long, long, long time. So yeah, like, crazy. humans have a hard time so grasping large, no one large numbers. What? Yeah. Hi, my name is Steph, and I have a bag problem. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to... The continuation of your bag problem. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's the connection with the makers for me, and I'm a creative person and also would love a capsule wardrobe. <laughs> I think I think I our think customer aspires aspi I was going to gonna say, even so, if they don't have a capsule wardrobe, they aspire to yeah. have one. Um, There's, an as there's definitely an aspirational element to it. Mm -hmm. I agree. They want to live their best life, and that's fine. Oh, yeah, I like we that. We want to help them. The only thing with doing these all at the same time is it hurts my fingers. Yeah. I think the other aspect to like our designs are they're, they're artsy, right? So yeah. it's not purely necessity. So, like, if you're going to the store and you just need a bag, you're going to choose something like different. Like a grocery than, tote, yeah. Like a tote or whatever. Um, but, like, our stuff, like, hopefully you can bring it out into the world, to the art museum, to, to a restaurant, to wherever you're mm -hmm. going. Yeah. Because um, it's not just purely a, a holder yeah. of your things. Do you guys have an offline bag course? I'm aware of the domestica class, but would love something in person. So we don't. Um, 
what was it, 2019, we were oh, yeah. going to do an in-person show. Well, 2020. Uh, in person. I guess it was going to be 2020. Or 2020, yeah. Right. An in-person class Yes. Um, in, the, in downtown Philly, but it never happened because of COVID. the pandemic. But yeah. um, since then, we haven't had the time to step away to do it. Yeah. We talk about, like, if we get an outside space. Of, yeah, we could host things there. Yeah, we'd be able to do bit more things along those lines possibly but sorry currently not I love that they're great bags made by great people you guys have been so helpful in my leather journey such an inspiration awesome. oh that's so nice to hear yeah we that's the other part of what we do and we really love like just sharing stuff um, it was really interesting like when we started doing the lives like there were so many people just like beginning their their journey in leather mm, and that's true I th it was like such a special time. It still I is. I think about it a lot, actually. It's such but. a funny. I said I had so many stomach aches, but because <laughs> I was so stressed out being live all the time. Well, I remember knowing absolutely nothing about leather and being like, <laughs> "We better figure it out." Better learn. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that's part of it too. I think people like to see, like, <clears throat> we've reached a certain level of success because we're able to do this full time. And I think people really appreciate seeing like the journey that we we've been on, and yeah, that's true. Knowing that it's possible, I know that's like inspiring for me. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's a weird life, but we chose it. It sure is. I also think about that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> this is life. This is what we're doing right now. We're still doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also just think about what Wes must think. He okay. thinks this is all normal. Well, when he learns that not everyone works in their house and makes things. Yeah, it has come up a little bit. He's going to be confused. Yeah. So what do your parents make in their basement? <laughs> <laughs> they make bags, right? <laughs> Wait, your basement is a place to play? I don't understand. <laughs> then he's going to get mad. <coughs> Excuse me. It's super important for people to see that their aspirations are possible and that they get encouragement to keep going when it's tough. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think that's, mm. when it gets tough, like you, yeah. It gets, it gets real tough. Yeah. And I honestly think that's we're lucky to have each other because I know so many people who are doing their business on their own, and I feel like if I were doing this on my own, I would have closed a long that's time it. ago. That's it. It's over. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Well, we just think about things in different ways, like as a matter of being different people. But... <laughs> We're very much opposite to yeah. of each other. Emma thinks I make all the jeans in the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she tells people all the time that I made her jeans. Aww. <laughs> so for in the store, she'll tell my wife, Daddy made these. That's awesome. That's so sweet. No, no matter how much I explain it, she just can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> You're the jean maker. Yeah. You make the jeans. You make the jeans. That's what you do. That's so cute. Have you ever made her jeans? That would be, sounds like it would oh. be so hard. Such tiny little pants. <laughs> no weirder than people that live on a boat or a sailboat and travel the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a similar life. <laughs> so we don't go anywhere. We do the we opposite the of going anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, but it's 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 both very freeing and very constraining. Like if you're doing yeah. that on a sailboat, you don't have a lot of options, but you have a lot That's of time. True. It's just it's. That's true. Similar but different. What kind of paid marketing efforts have you guys? tried succeeded avoided so a long time ago we tried influencers oh yeah which was hilarious um it didn't work for us um 
We didn't try very hard, but we no. we tried for a few quarters. We tried to get like a couple people. Um, I don't really think it did much. No, it, did, it really didn't. Do much. I like still like. And that those was even people. like at the height of like the influencer world. Yeah. And. And I still like those people a lot, and like still yeah. have relationships with them via Instagram. But um, yeah. yeah, just not. That definitely didn't work for us. Um, we did like Instagram ads, which we primarily have a lot of people who follow us through Instagram, so that made sense for us. And that was they're they're okay. They work. Um, I tried Google Ads a long time ago, also, oh, yeah. and I think, I mean, if I paid someone to do them, it probably probably would have worked better. But I I didn't find a ton of success with that. And we tried Bing Ads too at the same time. Is that something you would ever want to try again or no? I don't know. I feel like that's just such like a commoditized commoditizes it in, in yeah, a way that, I could see that I'm not interested in. I'm well I don't think that necessarily speaks to our customer. Yeah. That so. makes sense. But anyway. So that's what we've tried. Um, what else have we done? I feel like we should get a billboard. We should get a billboard. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to be careful. Like your your ads need to like running an ad just to run it doesn't do any, do you anything. Like mm. you have to have your business set up to be able to accept new sales and more sales. You also have to be willing to change your ad, um, work on your copy, and like design to your target customer. And like that's it's time consuming and difficult. So. It sounds so easy. Mm. Um, throw it up there, but it doesn't. It's a little more difficult than that. I'm still traumatized by making my niece some jeans when she turned four. Her response was, "Thanks, but I don't really like jeans." <laughs> 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 I mean, I imagine like the, so a raw funny. denim on kids is probably oh, a problem. Oh, way too. Yeah, no. That's really cute though. I make fall into winter coats every year. I love it for my sons and nieces and nephews. Oop. My niece thinks I can do anything, so she always picks the most difficult fabric to work with. Of ah. course. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah, so billboard in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> the point of ads, at least for luxury brands, is just brand recognition. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, that's why the ads we do are just like of the making process. I was it's gonna, it's I was not gonna like, say, yeah. um, they're not sales, they're not promotions, they're not... Um, Nothing that cheapens what we do. Yeah, it's sense. pretty much always just us like making the bag. So like it's basically in my mind, if you're curious, you'll look at it, you might learn about us, you might talk to us, you might buy a bag. Like it's a slow process, and I'm fine with that, um, because I want people that are interested in what we're doing, and not just like, ooh, bag, you know, this price, buy it, and then yeah. those are when you get the returns. I was just gonna so, say. Yeah. Um, Kind of how you set up, and I'm going to say sales funnel loosely, how you set up your sales funnel um, can definitely impact your returns and like your customer happiness and then, then your personal happiness. <laughs> <laughs> what tanneries are you looking to try or tanneries abroad like in Italy? Um, I mean, we love Italian leather. We're super, super happy with Wicket and Craig, which is who we use now mm. for our Pennsylvania tannery. Um, we're always throwing like the idea around of different tanneries for different reasons, um, but for a multitude of reasons, we're getting Craig really just works for us. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a lot of different reasons. I mean, for us, the number one thing is it makes the smallest impact. Yeah. Because you know it's getting tanned in our home state; it's not going far. Um, and then honestly, it's the quality of their leather and like. And I don't necessarily mean like their quality is be best th better than anyone else's. It's just literally the types of qualities that come with their leather mm -hmm. is what I like to work with. Yeah. Um. Like we've I've we've gotten um, Herman Oak, uh, Sedgwick. Um, who makes Butero? I can never. Walpier. Yeah. There you go. Um, And a couple other ones, and we're just we're really happy with uh, what we have here. I saw an ad yesterday for garment blanks. 
a garment blanks company. It was just a crayon drawing of a hoodie that said, we fired our marketing person, please buy our blanks. It was honestly genius. <laughs> that's odd, that's weird. That's really funny. I hope they didn't really fire the marketing team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, I think whatever you do has to align with your company and what you, like, you can't just be like, yeah, out of left field. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny, though. That's one of the reasons, like, we've thought about getting, like, a T-shirt printed or, like, oh, yeah. or like a piece of clothing printed, but nothing ever really made sense for us. Nothing's to, ever to, to be really like, yeah, that's, like, beanies was kind of possible, but it yeah. still was, like, not, not right. We wanted to fit. Yeah. We would want it to fit like perfectly. Yeah. And we haven't, we didn't, we never found it, so we never did it. No, we didn't. Like the, the rabbit hats were the closest thing to that. Yeah, I agree. Have you ever considered to have stock offline in stores? Yeah, we talked about that today. Um, we're not really. Um, set up to be wholesale, so that's part of it. But we we did talk about the possibility of like maybe doing three designs that would work for a wholesale situation, um, right. and then being very thoughtful about where they would what be, stores like you what would store they would be work with. with. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's always been something that we think about. Yeah. I'm also super appreciative that you're sharing the details. Yeah, of course. No secrets. Well, only a few secrets. I'm gonna. We have one secret now, and it's your favorite secret. <laughs> if you want an H and H denim jacket, I know a guy. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I feel know, about okay. jackets. I don't like them. I'm gonna sand this real quick. Yeah, here we go. They probably. Can't hear you. She doesn't understand how microphones work. <clears throat> Sorry, everybody. Yeah, I think that's one of the decisions that you kind of make early on, or you should make early on. Like, are you going to do wholesale? Are you going to do retail? Do you have to consumer? Um, which one works best for you? Uh, your pricing strategy versus like your pricing strategy, the cost of your goods. It, it can be, yeah, not everything works one way or the other. So. Hello from Kazakhstan, hello. I'm hoping for H and H stickers so I can put it on my left edge. We actually, we do have stickers. I feel like we just don't send them out. We have circle stickers. How do you forecast production? That's great. So we're open once, like a week out of the month. And then, um, like in our minds, we have a range that we can handle as far as how many bags we can make. And once all the orders are in, we make a production schedule and we kind of do it week by week. So this week, this many bags, this many, this many. Um, so we have a pretty good idea of where we'll be um, and how long it'll take us to finish those up. So, if we find ourselves getting too close to like capacity, we do close down ordering. Um, <coughs> or if we know like we need some runway for something else, like say Leon wants to design, we'll mm -hmm. shut down early as well so we can only take a certain amount of things and then so we can get those done so she can do something else. Um, but we kind of forecast a little bit after the fact. Um, also, once all the orders are in, I can decide if I need to purchase leather or not, and hardware and all the other stuff. Um, it kind of saves us a little bit of effort because Is it but it, it's also hard to gauge. Like sometimes some leather you get better yield out of than others. And, but are you just talking about the how our orders work? Or? If someone asks how we project for, like how we forecast. I forecast oh. sales dollars by month also. So. I have an expectation of what we're going to make each month, and um, you can kind of reverse, you can go backwards through that, but I 
I hope that answers some of your question. And when you're forecasting sales, like you look back month over month, and you also look back historically for a year. So like last October, what did you do mm. um, versus you know September? Are you still on the same trend? You can give yourselves um, a like a, a comp, a comparison percent. So you can say this month is th this quarter I comped this much over last year, this much over last year, and then you can kind of say you can see where your trend is. So if you're up 5% year to date, you can just add 5% to last October, and then you find yourself with a pretty good idea of what you should expect for October, unless there's some sort of other circumstance. Yeah, like the pandemic or something. That, you're, <laughs> that you don't know about. Um, but I'm, I'm a big believer in historical sales to help forecast future sales. It's, it's just not that difficult. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but weather, believe it or not, plays a pretty big uh, factor in it. Mm -hmm. So, like, if it got colder earlier in the season for us, we would probably make more sales because mm -hmm. um, people are thinking fall, winter. They're thinking that kind of thing. Um, and the opposite's true. If it gets warmer early on in like February, yeah, then we're we'll probably have more sales too because people are thinking the opposite. They're it's whenever the wardrobe change over kind of yeah. really happens. And that's what makes like planning um, design launches tricky, because you don't want to go too early. No, like everybody hates that like Halloween stuff comes out in like August, which is like right. ridiculous. But like you have, there's like a sweet spot where you can find, um, you know, it's not weird, <laughs> and it makes sense for <laughs> it to be there. But sometimes so weather funny. can allow you to push that forward or backward depending on um, how it's how it's going. She's gone again. Sorry. I don't have anything to do with my hands. Do you have? Do you feel like you have trouble forecasting? In the very beginning, when we had zero data to go off. Yeah, of, I was gonna say was like, that was. You were, we were just accepting whatever was coming our way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can't really forecast. And then obviously we went through 2020, 2021. We're all both weird. 2022 norm yeah. normalized. And 2023 has followed a similar pattern um, for us. And knowing your seasonal swings is definitely helpful. Yeah. Um, like we also know through the summer, one of those months is going to be real bad. We don't usually know if it's J June, July, or August, but usually one of those months is not great for us. So if you want to plan that quarter, like as a total, and then work work at it that way, that could be helpful for you too. That way you don't you don't budget incorrectly. Burnishing over there. I'm at the very beginning of starting a bag business, but feel very clueless. Yeah, I mean, that's really normal. Um, <laughs> not that doesn't help you, but it's really normal to have. When you have nothing to go off of, it can be difficult. I think you have to have your eyes and ears open to your customers to see what you can learn as fast as possible. Um, whether that's through in-person shows or through your sales online. You want to be learning as much as possible from those first few sales. And don't kind of, don't get stuck like putting all your eggs in one basket. So like say one customer really wants this thing from you and then you're like, well, everyone must want that. And then you go really hard into that one thing. Like you gotta, you gotta give it a, a trend, like three is a trend. So. If you're getting to the point where three, those three things happened and you're like, okay, well, maybe that's something I should consider incorporating into what I do, um, you need to be on the lookout for trends like that. Uh, in the beginning, it's just difficult. And that's the hardest, it's so hard. It's the hardest part. Um, and that's also why I recommend doing what you're doing while you have, like do it as a side hustle while you have a regular job, um, if you can. 
because then you're building it up slowly. So by the time you're at the point where you have historical information where you can work off of, um, and you can learn to see if you can really jump into it full time and if it's going to work for you and all that other stuff. Here's a good point. Also, do not underprice yourself. If you think you're overpricing your goods, there's a 99% chance you aren't. You aren't. Yeah. So, if everybody listened to every customer, all of our items would be free. But it's your job to find the customers that appreciate what you do and are willing and happy to pay for it. Um, how, mu how much? It, like how much it makes? How much it costs for you to make it plus profit? So. I feel like maybe I should just keep this as a hobby, but also very curious if my works have any market traction. Yeah, that's why you're, you should test it out and see if it works. If you want it to become a business, that's great. If you don't, that's also great. Like if you want it to be a hobby that you enjoy, um, that you sometimes make some money on, um, that's there's totally acceptable. Um, whatever works for you is, is the goal. That's how any business works. Ah. Sorry. So if, like for us, if we wanted to make um, a lot more money, we could take on investor, not investor funds, but like bank funds, we could get a space outside of here, we could have a small team, we could then run crazy ads, like we, there, whatever you want to do with your business is how, is what you have to decide to make a goal towards it, so, hope that makes sense. Just so you know, you have a microphone on. Okay. All right. <laughs> I haven't said anything terrible ever. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with having a hobby. And if it turns into a business because you want it to, that's great. But if it doesn't and you don't want it to, that's also great. It's all great. It's all great. <laughs> Some things should never be businesses. That is true. Some people should never try to own their own business. <laughs> So they can at least see what you're doing a little bit. Okay. Oh, I think we tried Horween a long time ago too. I'm trying to think other companies. Because hmm. they have like a veg tan line. Mm -hmm. Double and Essex, I think. I just joined, <laughs> when will Chloe reorder open? Great question. November 1st. Chloe and Mini Chloe will, will be back then. Um, all colors. Uh, we're still waiting on navy to see when that's gonna come back. Yeah, hopefully November. Hopefully that'll be back too for November. If it's not, that'll be sad. This is what it's like to paint a bag. Except this is not a bag, it's a wallet. It's a very small flat bag. I ordered on November, when will it be finished? December or after January? So here's, okay. So November 5th is our holiday cutoff date. So our goal is to get everything to everybody that's ordered by November 5th at their doorstep by 1224, December 24th. Um, if we happen to open up for December, all the orders for December will, will begin working on them starting January 1. Um, but yeah, if you order by November yeah, November. 5th, you should have it before the holidays. Right. That's a great question. Um, yeah, because the holiday, holiday gets wild, so yes. we, we're trying to get ahead of it. Always. Yeah, thanks for that question.
The other thing to the other person. What are your thoughts on Etsy for selling on your own website? Uh, we actually kind of talked about this earlier. Um, I highly recommend selling on your own website, getting your own um, customer base together that way. Because you're kind of beholden to Etsy and that third party. And that they're going to gonna siphon money off of you a little bit. And also you're also competing with um, very similar type of items and you're also competing with manufacturers mm -hmm. um, so it can be really rough especially for the maker unless you're doing a very specific type of item that is like a holiday item in my opinion but yeah yeah and you're relying on them to get your stuff in front of people instead of well, so you make a dop kit, and then someone searches dop kit. They see your dop kit, then they see about a dozen different other dop kits, and they're like, well, what's the cheapest one? I'll get that one. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, it's a race to the bottom. So, don't do and, that. And if they even click on your dop kit, and then they scroll down, Etsy's going to show them, here's some more dop kits that are cheaper. Not from you. That are not from this seller. So, yeah, you have a lot more control over your branding and stuff also. That's true. Um, to the, the person that was talking, that was thinking about starting their own thing, um, you really want to ask yourself, what are you putting out into the world that's very, that's different? So, um, are you just recreating something that's already out there, or are you offering a new fresh perspective um, in different materials? Is there a different technology you're using? Like, how are you different than every, everything else out there? So, that should help you kind of figure out if what you're going to do will be successful or not. Hello from Spain. Hello. Hello. Hola. <laughs> I love your country. Yeah, we had a great time in Madrid. Yes, we did. What time is it? Hmm? What time is it? That's a great question. 12.33. Oh, jeez. No wonder I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. No wonder I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. We make more videos about the Chloe. Thank you for creating awesome leather goods. Um, we did a... Bag tour. We did a bag tour of the big Chloe. Yeah. So it should be up on... It's up on YouTube, but it's also up on our product page. I think it's the last one. The last, like, thing when you scroll over. Uh, like slide. If there's something specific you want to know, we can definitely, we can talk about it too. Super curious, do you monetize from YouTube? Um, so we recently, uh, I guess, reached a threshold that we're able to. Um, we haven't really gone after it yet, like super recently, like this happened. A week ago? Yeah, like weeks a couple ago? weeks ago. So we don't have a lot of info on that yet. Um, but we don't, we also don't really, I mean, I don't think we put out a ton of stuff on YouTube. But it's, it's tough, like, those things are very time consuming, and I want it to be helpful to people, so we've so far just done, like, some videos with some voiceovers, mm -hmm. um, bag tour, bag tours, course, yeah. Studio tour, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I personally don't feel we've found like the the right mix that yeah. we want. Um, so we'll keep trying until something works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work either. It's not something that we're counting on. Um, bag tour of the mini Chloe. Yes. So we have a couple of tweaks to the prototype that we want. So yeah. once those are complete, we we'll, we will absolutely do a mini Chloe bag tour. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to be representative of what you're getting. Yeah. Um, and then we took pictures specifically of not those areas. It's the the way the handle attaches. So yeah, it'll attach it'll look, the same. It'll just look slightly different when you open the bag. That's yeah. all. It it works the same yeah. way. No, there won't be a crazy just, surprise, but it's just the details of how it how we're gonna do it. Yeah. We're working on it. Yeah, we have a couple ideas. I have so many product ideas. Whoops. 
So little time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the most important yeah. question of all, what should I get for lunch? That's up to you. <laughs> what's, go. what's started or inspired the journey for you guys? What inspired it? The weather. The weather part. That's, that's <coughs> actually true. I mean, it is true. That, but I also love accessories. I've always loved accessories. Yeah, I think for us, this is a combination of things we like to do in an interesting, different way. And it just kind of, it, we kind of fell into it a little bit, but that's not really doing the amount of work it took to get here justice, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean. Because nothing happens by accident. No, and it doesn't happen overnight Except either. for accidents. Okay. <laughs> you ready to go? You're hungry? <clears throat> yes, I am. Can't, can't do it anymore? Can't. All right, last burning questions. Get him in now. <clears throat> Lose my voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do we have any questions? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. All right. Well, we will is. see you next Thursday. Next Thursday, right? Is there any reason? I don't see why is there not. any reason we wouldn't be? That you can I don't foresee. Think so. You have a doppelganger. Oh. Piper from Charmed. I'm not familiar. Oh, we have to watch um, what we do in the shadows. Mm. Is that on I, Hulu? I think it's on Hulu. We have to see it. I think we've it. missed like two seasons. I know. That's why I want to watch it. Yeah. Holly Marie Combs. I, I, guess. I don't know if I look like that. <laughs> I assume that it's for a few days. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll catch you next Thursday. Don't forget, it's order week. Love this what we week. do in the shadows. <laughs> yeah, um, so if you want to place an order, now's the time. Otherwise, you got to wait for the first week of November. True. Holidays are coming faster than we think. Faster than we think. Always. <laughs> Not always. Yeah, the last the last half of the year is weird. I know. It always is. Alright guys. We'll talk to you soon. <sighs>